GM, welcome back to another Cocos Creator tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn some of the basics on how to use 2D physics and collision. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a node to represent the floor. Let's give it a solid color by changing the sprite frame property to default sprite splash. And then shape it out into a rectangle. Now let's add a collider component to the floor node. In physics based games, colliders are essential for defining the shape and properties for objects that can collide with each other. Cocos Creator provides various types of colliders. The box collider is a rectangular shape that's great for objects like walls and platforms. The circle collider is useful for objects like wheels or coins to collect. And the Polygon Collider allows you to define custom shapes using a set of points. It's ideal for objects with irregular or complex collision areas. Let's add the Box Collider to the Floor node and explore its properties. The Editing property allows you to visually adjust the Collider's shape in the Scene Editor. The Group property can assign the Collider to a specific collision group. This can be useful for categorizing and filtering collisions between different objects in your game. We also have properties like density, sensor, friction, and restitution. We'll dive deeper into each one soon. But for now, let's create another node and name it block. Change the sprite frame to default sprite splash. Set the width and height to 100 and change the color to red. Lastly, add a box collider component to define its collision area. Now let's run the scene. As we can see, there's no gravity on our node, so the block just stays in the air. We need to add a rigid body component to fix that issue. This component allows objects to be affected by gravity and other forces. Let's add a rigid body component to the floor node. Now let's take a look at some important properties of the rigid body component. Enabled contact listener allows the node to detect collisions and respond to them programmatically. We can set the type of rigid body we want and we'll also find properties like gravity scale, linear and angular damping and velocity, and fixed rotation. Let's focus on the four types of rigid bodies available in Cocos Creator. The static type is used for objects that remain stationary and unaffected by forces. It's commonly used for walls, floors, or other static elements in your game environment. The kinematic type is like the static type, but allows you to manually control the movement of objects. You can change their velocity and position, making them ideal for moving platforms that interact with other dynamic objects like the player. Dynamic type represents objects that are fully affected by forces such as gravity and collisions. These objects can move, rotate, and interact with other rigid bodies. Lastly, the animated type is derived from the kinematic type. This is basically used for rigid bodies in combination with animation editors. For our floor, we'll select the static type as we want it to remain stationary and unaffected by any forces. Now let's add a rigid body component to the block node. Leave the type as dynamic, as we want it to be affected by gravity and collide with the floor. Now let's run the scene and observe the effects of the rigid bodies on the objects. Now the block falls and collides with the floor. But if we change the collision groups, it'll have a different effect. To manage collision groups, we need to access the physics settings. Go to project settings, then select the physics tab. In the physics settings, you'll find the collision matrix. This matrix allows you to define which collision groups can interact with each other. Each row and column represents a collision group. And by checking the boxes in the matrix, you enable collisions between the corresponding groups. Let's add a new collision group called floor. This group will be assigned to our floor object. Leave the box between default and floor unchecked. Change the group to floor in both collider and rigid body components. 
Now let's run the scene and watch the effects of the collision groups on our objects. Notice that the block now falls through the floor. This happens because the block and the floor are in different collision groups that isn't enabled to collide with each other. Set the group back to default and let's dive deeper into the different physics properties. Restitution is a collider property that basically determines the bounciness of an object. A higher value means more bounce. Let's experiment by setting the block's restitution to 1. Run the scene. Now we can see the block bouncing off the floor with a good amount of energy. This creates a more pronounced bouncing effect. Gravity scale determines the strength of gravity affecting an object. By adjusting the gravity scale, you can make objects feel lighter or heavier. Let's start by running the scene and observing the default behavior. Also, watch the velocity of the falling block. It'll also be affected by the gravity. Let's increase the value to 20. Now the block falls much faster and the velocity is higher as well. We can also reduce the gravity scale to make objects feel more lighter. Let's set the gravity scale to 0 0.5. The block falls much slower now. This creates a lighter and more floaty movement. Linear velocity refers to the speed at which an object moves in a straight line. Place the block on the floor and set the x linear velocity to 10. Now the block is pushed horizontally. Let's set the block's y velocity to 10 instead. The block pushes up vertically like a character jumping. Angular velocity determines the rate of rotation for an object. Let's set the velocity to 100 and watch as it rotates counterclockwise. If you need it to rotate clockwise, just make the value a negative number. Let's increase the velocity to 360 now. Now it rotates rapidly around its center point. Linear damping is a property that simulates air resistance or friction, slowing down the linear velocity of an object over time. With a Y velocity of 100 and damping set to 10, the block's velocity gradually decreases, simulating the effects of air resistance. Friction determines the resistance between two objects in contact. It affects how much force is required to move an object along a surface. When you set a friction value higher than zero, it simulates a rougher surface, resulting in slower movement. A friction value of zero represents a completely smooth, slippery surface with no resistance. Let's set the friction of the floor to five. Now set the block's x velocity to 10 and run the scene to see how it interacts with the floor's friction. The block is slowed to a halt due to the friction applied to the floor. Let's now set the floor's friction to zero and run the scene. With no friction applied to the floor, the block now moves more freely and smoothly. Density determines an object's mass. It affects how heavy or light an object feels. A higher density, the heavier it is, and a lower density, the lighter it is. Let's demonstrate this by first duplicating the block and changing its color to yellow. And set the density to 20. The yellow block is now heavier than the red block. Let's set the x velocity for the red block to 15 and run the scene. The red block now has a harder time pushing the yellow block because of its increased mass. Now let's change the yellow block's density to 5. With a lower density value, now the red block can push the yellow block a bit easier. Finally, let's set the density of the yellow block back to 1. We can see that the red block can push the yellow block now with ease.
Contact listeners are essential for handling collision events in your game. They allow you to detect when two physics objects come into contact with each other and trigger specific actions based on those collisions. Let's start by enabling the contact listener on the red block so we can detect when it collides with other objects. Now let's create a new script called Collision Manager to handle all the collision events. Open it in Visual Studio. And in the start method, we'll get the Collider 2D component attached to this node. Next, we'll add an event listener to the collider and specify that we want to listen for the begin contact event. This line allows us to detect when a collision begins between the red block and other physics objects. Now let's implement the onBegin contact method to handle collision events. With this code in place, we're now ready to handle collision events between the red block and other objects. The code for these functions are linked below. Let's save the script and add Collision Manager to the red block in Cocos. Raise the red block a bit to allow it to collide with the floor. Let's run the scene and observe the console log. Now a message is logged in the console when the red block makes contact with the floor. The onBegin contact method has three parameters. Self collider refers to the node the script is attached to. Other collider refers to the collided object. And contact contains the most important info about the collision. Let's update the console log to display the name of the collided object. For this, we'll need to use the other collider parameter and then get its name. Save and run the scene, and now you should see the log with the name attached. Sensors allow physics objects to detect collisions without causing any physical response. Let's enable the sensor on the yellow block. With sensor turned on for the yellow block, it can now detect collisions without affecting the red block's movement. Let's set the red block's X velocity to 10. And run the scene. Even though the red block collides with the yellow, it passes through without any physical response. And the message still logs in the console, indicating that a collision has been detected. You can use sensors for stealth games, activating cutscenes, objective markers, and much more. Joints are used to connect two physics objects together, creating various constraints and interactions between them. Copy the values for both red and yellow blocks I have shown. Now let's add a distance joint component to the yellow block. The distance joint allows us to connect two physics objects while controlling their distance. There's many joint components to choose from, but we're going to demonstrate this one for now. Let's add the red block to the connected body property to joint the two blocks together. Run the scene. And we can see that the red block is now swinging from the yellow block. By default, the autocalc distance is checked, which automatically sets the distance between the connected bodies. Let's uncheck it and set the max length to 300. The red now has a little more slack from the yellow. Now let's place the red above the yellow. The red falls through the yellow because we haven't enabled a certain property. To enable physical contact between the connected bodies, we need to turn on Collide Connected in the yellow block. Now the joint objects can physically interact with each other. Collision impulses refer to the forces that are applied during a collision. They determine the strength of an impact and can be valuable for many game mechanics.
For this demo, we'll only be focusing on the red block. To better visualize the impulses, let's set the restitution of the red block to 1. To retrieve collision impulses, we must use the onPostSolve method. This allows us to access collision data after it's been calculated. We can only access the impulses using the onPostSolve method. Let's update the console line in the method to display the impulse. We're going to use the contact parameter, then get impulse, and normal impulses. This returns an array of values, so we're just going to get the first value. Let's run the scene and observe the console to see the collision impulses in action. That first impulse was around 2300. Let's experiment with different velocities to observe how the impulse changes. Set the Y velocity to negative 10. Now the impulse is higher when the block speed is increased. Now let's move the block closer to the ground and set its velocity back to zero. With the block closer to the ground, the collision has a lower impulse. These are just a few things you can do with physics in Coco's Creator. Links to the documentation for each topic is in the description. Like and share if you found this video helpful either to you or someone you may know. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.